Hey, do I have approval at any point during this pod if I need to fart mid conversation? Can I just grab the mic yeah. and shove it up my ass? <laughs> Yo, I think David Woo. just answered that question for us. He didn't even ask for permission. I'm sweating. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back to another podcast. We are joined today with our good friend, David McKinney, who started out as uh, just a corporate guy, <laughs> sponsor. What? I mean, no, he's, yeah. from, he's from 509, one of our longest running like brand company endorsements. If and you can call, first I don't ever. know why I'd call it that. I, what would you call our relationship? Started as a sponsor, but now it's just like yeah, it's more than that. So I didn't want to yeah. just like down. There's collabs. It. There's trips. There's video. It's I don't know. Yeah, brand um, relations maybe. Joined by his sidekick, Evan Dirty Ev. Hey pal, Dirty Ev. Just like back in preschool. Right, right. So for those of you that don't know, they went f- to school together from preschool until senior year. Yeah, David's actually the reason that we know Evan today. But anyway, we just ripped an hour and a half long podcast. On 509's YouTube channel and Spotify, wherever you're listening to podcasts. So, feeling your passion. After you listen to this one, if you want to listen to more of us, go and check that out. Anyway, welcome. Thanks, pal. <laughs> I feel like we just did this. I can't Dude. wait to see where this one leads. We talked about a lot of snowmobiles on the 509. What? <laughs> <laughs> For crying out loud, I'll do it myself. <laughs> so, as uh, someone who wasn't in on this joke, no idea what just went on. Like, Ben, I'm not going to lie. I thought you went over to go, like, help Evan with something and then almost, like, fell into the wall and knocked over the sign because you definitely almost knocked over the sign. Uh, I'll, I'll just be honest. I went in to take the legs out of Evan's chair. That's why we put them on a plastic chair, and they didn't want to break. So I Ryan, come, uh, is your foot okay, Ryan? Yeah, no, it's my ankle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought it was your shin, thank God. <laughs> I'll just do it myself. Hey, I definitely did not see that coming. Yeah, I was suspicious the second I walked in here and saw a white chair. <laughs> I trusted the process. I mean, dude, people listening to this podcast right now are so confused if they're not watching this on YouTube. I mean, it made sense. You said CJ needed his chair back. I'm like, that makes sense. He's got to edit. He needed a better chair than I do to film this pod. I guess I'll just sit in plastic. I love it. So <laughs> trusting. Hey, so I want to ask you a question, Ev. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people are also wondering this, so I figured I would just do the dirty work of asking it. Uh, where do hamsters come from in the wild? <laughs> I have no idea, but it has to be an animal <laughs> out there in nature somewhere. Have you ever seen one? No. You don't think Patco just breeds them? No, they definitely breed them, but they had to come from where's somewhere. The, where's the original, the OG hamster? Is that a wild bear, like, animal? Huh? Or, I mean, even cats, I guess, are, but, like, where do hamsters come from? Dude, I've never thought about this, but it is an extremely valid point. Like, where do they live naturally? Are they a rodent? Pardon my language, know. mom, but fuck hamsters. <laughs> <laughs> like, I like pets. I like a lot of pets, but my sister had a hamster growing up and bite me every time. And she goes, that's just because you have, like, sweaty hands. <laughs> what? Salty salty fingers. I'm mm. like, yeah, okay. So I'd wash my hands before I hold the hamster. Still bite me. Like, I'm talking pull blood. And I was like, I what? hate hamsters. Why would you ever want a hamster? I've never heard of a vicious hamster. Not vicious. Just I've never heard you. of a wild hamster either, though. Nah, that's true. Can somebody get I'm, to the I'm, bottom I'm of this? I'm searching it here. Hands I mean, why it, wouldn't you want a hamster? You could have a little I cage don't. in the corner of your bedroom, you know, full of sawdust, smells like crap. <laughs> uh, the thing does nothing but nibble on you a little bit, run on a wheel. <laughs> this I is know. what Evan's girlfriend says about him. Jeez. <laughs> Syria. Holy. Syria. Oh, okay. That's where wow. they originate yeah. from? Would as, never as have what? guessed. Clearly wild, but like... They were not bred in, dom- domestically until 1939. So wow. there were just wild hamsters up until like... Only 90, wild hamsters. Like 80 years ago. I mean, I've never been to Syria exploring in the woods. Some of so them are in sense. Greece, Romania, Belgium, and northern China also. 
That's so Can weird. You just imagine seeing it? hamsters running around the woods? No, like, not what? at all. In, but are they are com- they wooded or are they desert or like what? Definitely not desert. They, they have wheels in nature. It's gotta be <laughs> they have wheels in nature. Why it, eat them? What? Oh, Peruvian people. The only thing I compare it to is like seeing a rabbit in the wild. You know, you think of bunnies as pets, also. Yeah, true. And you see cottontails, and it kind of just is a cute little fluffy thing bouncing around. And then coyotes eat them, and nature gets gnarly. Evan, what kind of animals did you have growing up? I could see you having like a lizard or a snake or some shit like that. Did you have a cat for a while? I could too, to be honest. Just a cat. Cat was the only uh, pet we had short of like catching a frog or a snake or something and keep it in a cage outside of the house. (laughs) I mean, if that counts as a pet, but you like catch a turtle and have it for like a week and then you let it go. A painter or a snapper? Oh, yeah, painted turtles. No snappers. No snappers? No. But had just like one cat that we got when I was probably seven, six, seven, eight. And then had it through my entire childhood. What about you, Dave? Dog. <clears throat> one dog, Golden Doodle, because my parents were brutally allergic to dogs. It was one of those classic, like, hound your parents that you're going to get a dog and take care of it. And then you do nothing. And then don't. Yeah, it's just no, a family then, yeah, dog. My mom was, it was my mom's dog, but it was my dog, you know? And I didn't do a damn thing ever. You didn't even put up, a, a like, a, an effort. No, I did. I'll never forget when we picked her up. We are bringing her back, and she... Had not my mom, the dog, <laughs> just because okay, I figured that's what you're talking I did about. <laughs> had like liquid diarrhea in the backseat of the car. <laughs> first, first ride home, oh, no, first wait, ride wait, home. Are we talking about your mom or the dog? The dog, the dog, okay. the dog. I hate when that happens. <laughs> so, like, that's my first impression. All excited to get a dog, and then I'm wiping up liquid shit everywhere, so I'm instantly turned off from taking care of this animal. But I mean, it was a great dog, 11 years old, you know. Good, R.I.P. Lacey. Oh. Not around. I was just going to ask. Still mm-hmm. there? Mm-mm. You, in the winter, travel more than I would have ever thought you even traveled. Like, I guess looking at your position at 509, you're on the road. November, as early as you as early as it snows, you're on the road. And as late as it snows, you're yeah. on the road. It's as like far as that goes. 60 to 70 days on snow every winter. It's almost as much as us <laughs> in the last five years. Six to seven <laughs> for us. It's so rad being able to drive 45 minutes now and ride like really good terrain and good snow rather than 16 hours. But you guys are the warriors like that keep the industry alive. You guys are spending the money on fuel, everything, lodging, all that, driving 16, 17 hours just to ride for four days. I don't miss it, but without those types of people, like this industry wouldn't be what it is. Yeah, that's the, that's the Midwestern way. Yeah, I, yeah think, everyone. I think mountain riding is becoming more and more popular too. For sure. You know, more... Just, I guess, used to uh, doing that trek yeah. get, and getting, like, another snowmobile uh, that you can ride out there. It, it is a big commitment, but I think the sport's growing more the, and more, it seems like. The bomber is the barrier of entry. Well, to a point, to a point, like, last year, we did a video, Cheap versus Expensive. Right. We definitely but I didn't get as far, but I'd say we had equally as much fun. I but, would never go out there. Like, this is just me personally. Like, I would never go out there with those three old sleds that we had. I would never, like, plan a trip. <laughs> exactly. To go That's out there with those. Yeah. So, like, that is a, a part. Yeah. You you make a good point. Like, still, like, there's a lot of people that I'm stoked to hear that are making the trip. And they make it seem like nothing because they love it so much. Like, guys from Wisconsin, that's far enough. Like, uh, Michigan especially. But, yeah, you know. 23 hours to West Yellowstone. Yeah. We're like, geez. And we it takes us 12. But yeah. the route is to do it right, it's a hundred grand minimum to get into it. The diesel truck, trailer, or sled deck, plus a sled. If you want to do it, you know, with newer stuff that you don't have to worry about maintenance as much, it's a hundred grand to get into the sport. Yes, but there is ways around it. For sure. But like you said, know, the diehards, might- it's a hundred grand to get into it. Yeah, but you could have a friend that's going, and hey, can I come with? And yeah, yeah and maybe you have a dirt bike. So, like for the first couple of years, uh, me and Mike would just put a snow bike kit on our dirt bikes because we couldn't afford mountain sleds. So it was like the way to, you know, kind of like dip our feet into the into the mountain riding yeah. experience without having to spend fifteen grand. And you Good know, point. we'd be in like three grand. Yeah. Instead. We didn't do that first, but that's like when we really started experiencing it. Maybe this has been said, but do snowmobilers look at snow bikes like dirt bikers look at quad guys? Oh, 100%. Really? Yeah. Gosh. 
Really? I don't know. It's mixed. It's super awesome sport for guys that come from a moto background. Like, they pick it up instantly. It's a way for them to get into the backcountry without having the massive learning curve of a sled. And then, honestly, for, like, the guys that are phasing out of sleds, the older crew, they can still get out longer in their lifetime and efficiently get across the backcountry. And it's just not my cup of tea. David's like, but that's absolutely right. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, that and is the end of it. Did I mention they I were lame? Say. It sounds so old school, but there's like no replacement for displacement. It's the same concept. I mean, it's and, the power and to even the dumb that down more, like there's no replacement for a snowmobile. Yeah, the power is hard to beat. And it's nothing the same at all. No. But we have a good time. Snow bikes are fun. Dude, I just love 220 horsepower. That's all it comes down to. 220? That's what you're running? With those turbos, yeah, about that. Sheesh. Dude, we had these uh, two uh, brothers out from Brainerd. They uh, came out, ride trick, trick jet skis, 215 horse for a jet ski. Is that what those ski? things are pumping out? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What kind of motor is that? They had a Polaris bottom end. That was my favorite part. It's all Frankenstein, not Frankenstein, all built. Yeah. But they take Polaris bottom ends from just a Polaris jet ski. Keep in mind, Polaris hasn't made jet skis in a long right. time. What like CC motors those things running? Uh, I think 900. Naturally aspirated? Yeah. That's yeah, insane, so like, dude. So much power for a two-stroke. So it was just cool to hear that because the only other time you hear about that power in a two-stroke is sleds. Yeah. Man. Yeah, you guys are going to see that video this Thursday. Uh, merch drop this Thursday, 7 o'clock. Check out the website, cboystv.com. The video of bringing those guys out is insane. I, I wasn't here for it, so I've just seen like right. a, a couple clips of it. And it's like truly, absolutely nuts what they can do and how young they are. Right. 14, 14 and 16. 16 years old. And they're like the like two of the best. Yeah. Their riding was unbelievable. And then when they take their helmets off and you realize they're just like a couple of young kids, it was like 10 times as remarkable. Like, they don't even have time to have gotten that good. They just are that good. How do they get that good only riding stand-up, like, four, four or five months a year? So, do they travel said, south or anything like in the winter months? Yeah, they have a competition in Havasu what, coming they, up in They're October. not there, like, constantly training. No, like but, they, but they did the say they'll, they'll run, like, a tank a day out there, half hour a day, ripping flips, I guess. That's wild. Practicing. Dude, it's so cool. The opportunities that we have to meet these insanely talented athletes and these incredibly talented individuals just in general like they just don't get like the recognition that they deserve maybe it's because they're a part or their their sport is more of like a niche sport but it's so cool that we can you know bring them on showcase them on our videos and in our platform and people just love it and i hope that they get something out of it you know get all kinds of recognition from it but I don't know. It's just really cool the people that we get to meet, and especially through David and the 509 connections. When we were younger, the people that we looked up to, and we were like, I told this story about I was literally, I saw Sane Skinner uh, at Heydays one time, and I was literally too afraid to go up and say hi to him. And now he's like, which one of our best friends, which is crazy. But the way that we look up to all these incredibly talented athletes and now we just get to film with them and bring them on and uh have a good time and kind of show like the personalities behind the talent i don't know we've just like has way too much fun yeah. with you and all the connections that we've gotten out of that like what i always call those like pinch me moments like just keep yourself level on it because evan and i we talked about in that pod also growing up watching all those old films and then now he's been able to meet some of those guys. Like you guys just rode with Brett Turcott in March, which is I mean, he's eight times X sorry, eight time X Games medalist. It's insane. Like he's and on he another like gnarly. Level. Like and when we were dude. with him, he was riding like it. Yeah. Too. He made it feel like we were just chilling with him for yeah. the day. Yeah, why don't you come sledding? It's a nice spring day. Pinch me all day, dude. Yeah, but yeah. that's the takeaway, is like they're just dudes. They're just exceptionally better than all of us at a certain thing. It's really all it boils down to. 15 years ago, I was waiting in line to get them to autograph my t-shirt. And now I'm drinking beers with them at Heydays. Right. That's autographing crazy. Autographing their t-shirt. Well, maybe not yet, but. <laughs> their wives are asking for dude Evan bro signature. 
<laughs> uh, why Keep the moms wait, out of this. Why, why was I just going to say that? And then Ben, I <laughs> stopped myself from saying it. And then Ben said it. <laughs> Evan loves moms. I do. I love Patty. <laughs> I don't know who Hi, Patty is, but oh, Evan's mom. I'm sorry. Great lady. Just a peach. Uh, I'd like to hop in. Yeah. Yeah. So you two have been friends for a long time, right? You grew up together? What oh, yeah. It's like an interrogation. I just want to know. <laughs> What was it like growing up with Evan? <laughs> Scary? Scary? Kind of. The biggest fun fact about Evan is that he grew up on a golf course and worked yeah. at a country club. <laughs> we worked at, we worked at the same golf course even. <laughs> yeah, know. David worked there too. We we worked together also. Well, Evan, David I could see. Evan could quit see way Evan. quicker than I did. Actually, Evan didn't quit. I think he got fired. No, no, no. I never got fired. I probably just didn't get put on the schedule. <laughs> <laughs> There's a difference. Because Evan was the kid like who was taking the governor off the golf carts, the maintenance carts, and was flying around, drifting on the golf course, and <laughs> always getting caught doing it, though. Or he'd be jumping the tee boxes that I like just mowed. So the I, thing is, like you said, got caught admitting that you were doing the same stuff. Were you just bad at hiding it, or was he just dumb about it, or what? I probably just did it more often, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't, like, check the surroundings beforehand and just full send constantly. What's the story of of you guys going on a ski trip? <laughs> <laughs> you started telling it earlier, and I was like, wait, 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 stop, stop, stop. We'll wait for the pod. Uh, Evan remembers it better than I do. <laughs> we were like... 13 maybe my <laughs> first time ever on an airplane i remember that which he's terrified of <laughs> yeah. absolutely oh, so this was like a ski is. trip ski trip yeah steamboat springs colorado okay all right <laughs> is this all resort from the, the mexican restaurant oh yeah <laughs> yeah i remember that I, I mean, just take the wheel on this <laughs> <laughs> evan gets so scared in front of him i don't know what dude. parts you want me to talk about <laughs> david just got to the conclusion which just Conclusion. Where you cleared my whole family out of the apartment well, because yeah. of the smell of your ass. Yeah, your mom got upset with me because I had <laughs> flatulence. It's like, you brought me to a Mexican restaurant two hours ago. Like paint peeling smells. <laughs> what did you expect to happen? It was like the most vile thing I've ever smelled come out of a human. My mom stands up like in the living room and she's like... We got to leave. <laughs> and we just left. So it looked like she was ready to cry. Like, I don't know what we're going to do with this kid. He stinks and I can't handle it. Like, open the windows, leave, go for a walk, let that place air out. He cleared the whole condo out. Was he, hold up. Was he proud of his work? <laughs> oh, my God. I'll never forget that smell. I'm glad that you'll never forget about my farts, David. <laughs> was Wait, it what like, you, what day of the trip was it? I don't know. It happened a few times, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I would say the Mexican night, that was midway through the trip. Okay, so you at least had a, a couple days under your belt of being a good kid. No. <laughs> <laughs> I showed up a bad kid. Yeah. They knew me before the trip. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would say they knew what they yeah, were getting into. Say, they kind of knew what they signed up for. <laughs> you were like, the- hey, when you say that it cleared out your entire family, like, were your grandparents in there? No, it's my mom and dad. Okay. There's a four Even of your us. dad left? Oh, yeah. We I was really left. hoping really? that it was like a full on family vacation. No. <laughs> no. Do you remember Going throwing deep. the fake fruits from the fruit bowl at people in the hot tub off the balcony? I remember, I think you tried to take a bite of one. <laughs> I did. I cut my gums. Before he knew it was fake fruit and grabs it. Bleeding everywhere Like a foam It looks so realistic It's like a decorative one Evan's like Ooh apples That can cut you I might have realized Halfway through it was fake But I just committed To taking a chunk out of it And it was sharp Comedian Never backs down From a good bit He shows me the apple It's just like Covered in blood On the inside Cause there's white styrofoam Bite taken out of it And you're like Evan we're renting this He put it back And it's like Flipped it over I feel like Evan's the kid That when he comes over Your family like Make sure the first aid kit is ready. No, we just send him home <laughs> if he got too hurt. Dude, it's like a total knock on wood thing, but I like never really got hurt when I was younger. I don't know how like I would you pile were- myself up. I would break everything. But as far as truly being injured, pretty rare. You're well, really that's good. good at falling. Yeah, like you a are. cat. Yeah. 
I think. He Jeez. was just more daring, right? Like, I was always into it, but I kind of was reserved and like, eh, yeah. Yeah, pussy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Like, I might get hurt. I know the type. Yeah. <laughs> you, you and I get it. <laughs> I'm yeah. the type. Yeah. yeah. And Evan would just go for it constantly, but he was doing that with everything from scooters to skateboards to BMX bikes and <laughs> scooters. Yeah. We were pretty good at scooters, actually. I cannot Before see. scooters were cool. Yeah. Yeah. Like have you Razor noticed that? scooters? You yeah, go to dude. a skate park now, there's more scooter kids than skateboarders. Dude, we had to build our own scooters out of like uh, Razor, like the folding ones and like rig it so they didn't fold. And some of them still had suspension on the front. Like not even close to what kids think scooters are now. What we were doing stuff on. Yeah. Back in our day. <laughs> <laughs> Christ. I feel like the guys, like. 70 years ago when they put a two by four with roller skate wheels <laughs> for a skateboard, that was us with scooters 10 years ago. Inventing the sport. <laughs> God damn it. I can't stop thinking about Evan clearing your family up. Thanks, David's parents, for the trip. They ate. They can't stop thinking can't, about it either. I can't help but remember, I think that was the only trip you went on. <laughs> Dude, do you remember the very first day we get to the top of the mountain, to the very top, the Christmas tree bowl? We have to, like, hike above the chairlift. Yep. And uh, there's a nice, fresh line with a few little drops. And uh, we decided you should film it. So you went down halfway. And I catch on the very first rock my ski and just tomahawk down this chute. <laughs> Day one, run one. <laughs> like immediately. Well, at first you thought I was dead. So I know you, and, and you're all worked up and I, I realized I was alive. And then, <laughs> and then we realized like, cause I, my skis didn't have the brakes on them because I had broken them. <laughs> gone. So one ski is just gone. Like we can't find it. It's just literally not there. And we've accepted the fact my ski's gone. So I got two poles, one ski, and I'm just kind of sliding down this chute. And I'm like, can I at least see the video? David gives me that like deer in headlights look. He's like, oh, I was so scared you got hurt. I, I didn't save it. Like back when phones, you actually had to hit save on the video. So we didn't even have the video of it. It's messed up that you turned into a film. The irony, right? Yeah. 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 I still have that problem, actually. Like, when a bad crash is happening, of, I, get, I mean, I just get worried if everybody's okay, which is not a bad thing to worry about. But I have the tendency of, while worrying, moving the camera away to, mm. like, get a better look to make sure. And I've, I've screwed that up a lot on, like, gnarly crashes. The start of it, and then it cuts because I, like, start filming the ground. Yeah. To put it this way, sure everybody's if, okay. if I ever happen to be in a gnarly wreck with all the gnarly Keep snow the doing I do, I would prefer there to be a video of me okay. in a gnarly wreck. I'm trying to work past it as much as it's a weird thing to work past, but mm -hmm. you'll do it for And a quick caring about people so much, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely. I tell you what, though. You make that mistake once around here. Ooh. Yeah, I'll never get to hold the camera. Chop again. and block, huh? What the? That's fuck the is, money shot for us. Yeah, yeah. Ev, I distinctly remember one time. I think uh, I got bored and I scrolled to your Facebook. First of all, your Facebook's a wild place. I'm gonna delete it. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> but there's a picture of you rolling around. I believe in a Ranger single cab Ranger, and you have your snowmobile. Not how a normal person would put a snowmobile in, where the the tail end is hanging out the back. But you had the front up on the cab of the Ranger, I believe. How did we get that in there? Uh, I think there was probably four of us. We had to lift it up. But it was a regular cab, like short box Ranger, plus it had a toolbox in it. Mm. So, like, they're literally, even with the tailgate down, the sled wouldn't sit in there. So we just kept pulling it forwards until it balanced. Rolled until the windows on top of the cab. Yeah, rolled the windows down, ran like a strap, like through the ski loops, maybe the spindles. She was fine. Yeah, I just remember his carbide marks on his roof. <laughs> the first time he did it, he put like towels down. Mm -hmm. No, I did it backwards. Remember, we had to haul two sleds that day. Oh, you had the and track we put the rev in forward. Yeah. yeah, we flipped them. Yeah, one had the track with studs on the roof, and that put stud holes in my roof. So, so then we put like, the that's not a good idea. But somebody out there has a whatever year Ford Ranger with carbide marks on the roof <laughs> <laughs> and a Nitro Circus sticker on the side. <laughs> Evan was just a grimy kid. I wish I could meet younger Ev. Yeah, I wish you guys could too. I should dig up some photos that you can a little slideshow. No, we, can no, we shouldn't. No. Do you remember when <laughs> fail was a thing? Were you guys old enough when people were just adding the text of fail? He wasn't, but I was. Yeah. So like pre memes, right? You just get there was like a fail app, and you download it and you <laughs> type the word fail and put it on a photo that was a, 
of fail. There's those nothing were, more to it. It was like the same time as planking, though, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. No. Or maybe... I have this photo. Are we aging ourselves? <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> by memes? Yeah, by memes. I have this photo of Evan wearing this Walmart, like, full-face mongoose helmet. Do you remember this thing? Y- yours. Yeah. Your full-face mongoose like, helmet. <laughs> you, you acted like I just got this from Walmart. It was yours <laughs> yeah, in your yeah. garage. Okay. A Continue. <laughs> and it's like three so sizes too small. Thing. And he put it on and... Pulled the chin bar down, and so his whole face is like sticking on the helmet like this, huh? just for this photo, and he could not get it off. Do you remember that? Full panic. Dude, it like hurts. It's like my cheekbones got above something rigid in the helmet. You do have to find cheeks. Yeah, it was like actually stuck, like sliding a ring on where it's a little tough, but it goes on, and it's not coming off. Did you call we, the fire department? For dude, I thought we were gonna off. have to cut my head off. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it's so good with the distinct, bold <laughs> fail. Okay, so now I'll ask you the reverse. Evan, what was David like in high school? Little shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, man, he was. Uh, he wore tall tees and skinny jeans, flat brim hats with the sticker on them. If that's this is a lot more of an uh, <laughs> outfit analysis than I expected. I, I don't okay. know how else to describe Evan, David was literally he how he was wearing. Well, because he's like so punk rock now, but he went through a little phase. He had a free Lil Wayne shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yes or no? <laughs> Dude, you got to get over the wardrobe, Maybe. bro. <laughs> okay. Do you, Evan, did you have one Evan, Evan, look at me. Look at me. Yeah. Do you remember? Anything about David Dude. other than what he was wearing? <laughs> he was honestly, David's the exact same as he was now. Dude, dude hasn't changed since preschool. <laughs> Thank you. I <laughs> did. I don't know. I feel like us hanging out now is literally the same as in like eighth grade. Like, dude, I've want to go I've ride just- some scooters? Yeah, yeah, kind of, yeah. It's, <laughs> but it's like the same vibes. Like, I literally, yeah. I don't even know how I would describe I just you. ridden snowmobiles my whole life. That's all I've, this is all I've done, man. I'm kind of like pretty simple. You always had nice snowmobiles. It's just riding snowmobiles. I had a 99 did, did MXZ. Resent, did you resent him for that, F? I mean, yeah, when I was a kid and my stuff was broken and his was mint, like, obviously. I wouldn't let him ride it ever. You, you no, know, and he wouldn't no. ever. Oh, well, really? maybe because yeah, there's a reason. Record. Yeah, I don't Evan, blame him. I don't blame him. You've always been such a destructive human, right? Yeah, since day one. <laughs> Is that just lack of care? Would you consider yourself unlucky? Um, like yeah, you know when you guys just coming from. You know when you, you guys talk stuff. about like where the chart comes to like um, the, the injury versus reward or something like that. Mm-hmm. I kind of look at like fun versus breaking. Okay, maybe. Yeah. So Paint it's like, picture. if this seems real fun, like I'm just going to do it. If breaking something's like a side effect, then mm. run it. Yeah, but he had that same mentality when he was using somebody else's equipment. I just does. wanted hey, to see what it would do. That's Dave, the problem. He still does. Yeah. Hey, if Ben gave you the keys of the Lambo, you wouldn't floor it? Probably not. Would you? Of course. <laughs> see, that's where we differ. <laughs> and he would. He's lying right now. No. No. You would put that no. sucker to the boards. Honestly, Ev... I could care less because it's just so entertaining for us. And if shit breaks in the process, shit breaks in the process. It's part of the game. Breaking your guys' stuff is way better than breaking my own. I'd imagine you're really good at it. I do feel bad sometimes. <laughs> you looked like you f- like felt genuinely bad when you sunk his Mike snow bike. It was so funny because you're so confident in that one. Yeah, he was so confident. Like failure wasn't even. An option, like it wasn't even a possibility, and I was like, "It's one hundred percent going to sink." And he was like, "I guarantee it won't." I was like, "Okay." I just didn't see how it wouldn't work. I saw videos of guys water skipping snow bikes. It's like I've water skipped snowmobiles. As long as you don't do something really dumb, you can't sink the snowmobile, which I have sunk. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but I can. <laughs> I got, I got hey, pop up the too. photo of that <laughs> yeah. one too. I got photos of that. I'm just saying, I thought that I had a real good chance at it, and then to find out there was no chance. Well, it originally started that we wanted to do it on an actual dirt bike, and that was the plan. And I think <laughs> I don't know who vetoed it. Maybe it was me. I I might have just been like, Dude, that's not gonna happen. 
he's going to make it 10 feet, and then he's going to... Like OTB hard. Completely eject Osito. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in hindsight, I guess the same fatality... Or, or, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, yes. fatality it's poor choice of words. The same... Uh, would have been the same end result yeah. either way, so maybe you just should have done it. Hey, everyone, quick break. In today's podcast, for a word from our sponsor, Vessi. If you guys have been following us for a while, you know that we love our Vessis. And if you're new here, you're about to find your new favorite pair of shoes. Vessis are 100% waterproof and look and feel like a normal sneaker. They're the perfect everyday shoes and forget about having to wear boots on a rainy day. Vessis are made from Dymatex, which is a dual climate knit material that keeps your feet cool in the summer and warm in colder weather. Vessis seriously don't feel like they should be waterproof. I love wearing my Vessis around the shop because they're lightweight and comfortable, but yet feel like normal shoes. And they're 100% waterproof, so if I wash my car or go outside in the rain, my feet stay warm and dry. I love wearing my Vessis around the shop because they're lightweight and comfortable and feel like normal shoes, but yet they're 100% waterproof, so if I go wash my car or go outside in the rain, my feet stay 100% dry. My favorite part about my Vessis is my feet don't get wet and cold after being in the rain or working with a pressure washer. They're truly built for all-day comfort. I wear them whether I'm in my office, riding pit bikes, or outside filming in the rain. Vessies are my go-to shoes by my door. Check them out at the link below and get your own pair of Vessies. I promise you guys, you will not regret it. Go to Vessie.com slash CBoysTV or use our code CBoysTV and get $25 off each pair of adult Vessie shoes. $25 off and free shipping to the U.S., Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. Thanks again, Vessie. Now back to the podcast. I would have swore the success rate would have been higher for the snow bike, though. Like, I figured the dirt bike's like 10% success, snow bike's 90%. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we we're going to drop a wrong. gear. What gear would you hit it in, third? Pff, I think I hit it in fourth. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, but then he went, like, went fourth to third to yeah, second to first. Banging Just down to the gears. bottom of the lake. To the bottom <laughs> of the lake with the turtles. With the fresh nipple piercing. Was that right after it? Mm-hmm. Dude, it was the yeah. next day. The next Imagine day. if you got like an infection because well, of that. That was like Evan's like third week here. No, that was his first week, I think. Was it? The no, nipple you didn't know. You're cramming. That that three weeks sounds about right. Maybe. Okay, first month. Dude. Oh, first month for sure. David, I want you to tell me about the time you T-boned me in the middle of a 40-acre field. <laughs> what? Oh, honest mistake. Oh, easy. Easy to do, actually. You know when you're a kid. Or now, I still do it. And you go over like a driveway and you see the snow bank <laughs> and you get a little bit of air and right in the air, you pin it so mm-hmm. you can shoot as much roost as you possibly can. Yeah. Okay. But then Naturally. you look back because you want to see the roost. Of course. Right. Right. So Evan and I are out in a huge field, <laughs> nothing in our way except for each other. Not a single <laughs> tree, nothing, You're no, no enemy. obstruction of view, like a little tiny hill. And I go up it. I'm on my Crossfire 500, 136, big, big long track in my eyes. Camouflage skis. Yeah, super cool. And I pop this three-foot tall wheelie. I look back. I see my roost. I look forward. And I see Evan. <laughs> <laughs> and I T-bone him so hard. T-bone? Uh, yeah. He's There's going, not like a... He's going this way, and I'm going this way. Which, you know, I, now that I analyze this, you saw me coming too. No, 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 no. So I was I was just turning to the left, and I mm. did put my arm up. But when I put my arm up that I was turning, you were looking backwards. Mm. So I would say a true T-bone would be like a 90-degree angle. I was maybe a 45-degree angle, and he deflected off of me so hard. And I'm I had, going 40. And you know those plastic um, bar hooks you'd put in? Not like where the factory bars have mm-hmm. a bar hook. It's just a little plastic nub mm-hmm. that you shove in it, and that's what... What it broke your fingers? There like, was injuries. Oh yeah, I went over, I went off the sled, and I think I went like over Evan's sled, and then I ripped my throttle off, and I ripped my fingernail off. That's what happened. And we like wrapped my fingernail up, and I think like you my know, bandana, bandana <laughs> or something. <laughs> of course, you're wearing a fucking bandana while snowmobiling. <laughs> it was cool, man. Hey, Ev, what was Dave wearing? Sled next. Oh yeah, definitely. He had the sled next gear. I had just Carhartt. The, just. <laughs> <laughs> and a bandana? And he was wearing just the tightest. <laughs> the tall tee. The way those uh, that base layer fit his butt <laughs> was so tight. Okay, honestly, though, going back, I can't rip on David for wearing tall tees because I wore them too. Yeah. So he did. Just, mm-hmm. just throwing that out did there. Did you wear each other's later? No, no mine were honestly are, bigger. Are bigger <laughs> for sure. So I slam into him. Okay. I wrap my finger. Can't even feel my finger. It's like twice the size. My fingernail's gone. It's bleeding everywhere. 
And we ride home, like, we duct tape the sled together, I think, or something. We got the throttle attached somehow. <laughs> and we get back, and we're, like, scared our parents are going to be mad. Uh, naturally. That yeah. is, like, the first child reaction. You're like, fuck. My and so I think we made some yeah. elaborate lie up, actually. I don't think I ever told them. Yeah, because I think my sled was good enough off that, like, I could just act like nothing happened, and you acted, was it just, like, a clipped, a log or a stick? Clipped a branch, right? Yeah. But mm. now, 10, however many years, 10, 15 years later, looking back at that, like, we got, that's another one of those, like, cheating death moments. Mm. That could have been super bad. Well, and I think a big thing for me, when I started to turn around in the field, I, like, picked my inside leg up and put it on the seat, kind of doing, you know, to lean to turn. But that's where you deflected off of me. Like I mm. probably would have took your bumper to my leg, and it would have probably been way worse. That would have hurt. Evan right was away. handicapped now because of me. I'd have been pretty fucked up of you. It was that close. I'm glad you don't think I'm handicapped. <laughs> <laughs> Physically. Oh, <clears throat> I'm, uh, dude, Dave. Yeah. Thank you for bringing Evan into our lives, bro. Mm-hmm. Truly is. No problem. He's such a good kid, and his ego is just getting out of hand. But other than that, he's such a good kid. <laughs> I don't even have anything to say. I can't defend myself. There's nothing I can do. So uh, here on the Life Wide Open podcast, we like to ask the hard-hitting questions. <laughs> no kidding. The traumatizing and, ones. No, and so we, you know, we dive deep into a lot of important subjects and stuff like that. And so yes. being... Not many opportunities would I have two young guys from Cloquet, Minnesota, to be able to sit down and ask them questions. So, David, was it was it hard growing up with Evan that his mom was so hot? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> it was hard that she was a twin. Have you guys met the twin? She has a twin? Mm-hmm. Do you guys yeah. not know that? Jesus. No. Why was She's that? Well, hold terrible. Up. Hold up. <laughs> Evan, dude, you can't dox your aunt, bro. I don't care how hot she is. Can't so you, get so into you guys that. do know about the twin. Okay, so Hold up. Oh. I I would like to talk about Evan's hot mom. <laughs> and David's thoughts on it. You know, that, that that's a tough one for me because I don't really I grew up with her. So I don't have the the hot mom effect like you guys might. I know that's not the answer you're hoping for, but that's the reality. I've right. known her since I was like five, so she was kind of like a mom to me as well. Did you get to breastfeed? <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the time that Peter oh. almost pulled the Jeep over on the fucking, excuse me, uh, <laughs> off ramp into No, we could say fuck on this because episode. Of the, <laughs> because of the comment I made, I'm not going to repeat it, but if you remember it, you can. We're on the way home from Heydays. We're actually in your mom's vehicle. That's why I said it. What are you talking about? I had bought lots of things at Heydays when I was like 14. We're on the. <laughs> what do you mean? Like what? Okay, the snowmobile yeah, stuff yeah. on the way home from Heydays and we we're driving. I don't even know where it came from because I think I thought it was funny at the time. But I was like 14. David's in the front seat and his dad's driving. I'm in the back and we're just talking about how much stuff we have in the car in the back of <laughs> David's mom's vehicle's trunk. I'm like, yeah, I put my junk in your mom's trunk and, and his dad was. <laughs> I thought I'd get a chuckle. I think I almost got strangled. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So your dad pulled over? Uh, no, he didn't pull over, but I'm saying the, it got so tense <laughs> in that vehicle. Luckily, we were pulling into town. It was one of those moments where you say the comment and then you're like... <laughs> <laughs> I tried to suck the words out of the air. It was already too late. How old were you? Like 14? Yeah. Was this pre or post ski trip when you <laughs> hit your pants? Post. post. Yeah, that post. Was, that trip. was strike that, number two. Strike number that two. That was yeah. the end. <laughs> David, don't hang out with that Evan kid. Oh, uh, yeah. What was strike three? There had to be that, a strike I was just three. Say, what, now what's the next strike? Uh, I don't even know. You would know better than me. She probably vented <laughs> to you. It was just constant. I don't know. We were always just constantly. Did you get a strike back for you almost killing him with your snowmobile? We always were almost killing each other. Dude, what a strange series of events that both of your guys' lives have gone in two completely different directions. But yet somehow you ended back up at this podcast table together. Now you're sitting yeah. on a podcast with two kids that make videos for the internet 
And if we brought you two back together. To drill us about our childhood. To drill you about Evan's hot mom. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you met her? Yeah. Yeah, I, she's I, amazing. I, yeah. I More along, the, I just mostly say it because it makes Evan uncomfortable. Oh, no, that's fair. I'm just wondering if you've actually been able to. Yeah, no, and she is incredible. Been blessed of her like, presence. No, she's actually a great lady. <laughs> Can I make David uncomfortable real quick? Yeah, Please. Remember before I got the gas, we were at the Mexican <laughs> restaurant, and your mom had two margaritas and spilled refried beans on her shirt. Whoa. Whoa, and then she's like, whoa, hey. it's just kind of like a shelf. <laughs> <laughs> Did she refer to her own? <laughs> oh, God, I'm, my mom, I'm so sorry. There were four of us there, and three of us cringed so hard we almost had to leave. <laughs> Dude, like your dad the reverse had to be, Uno uh, after Evan's comment at heydays about the junk. Yeah. I'm your sorry. If my mom gets like, brought into it, yours does uh, too. I, yeah, I never said anything bad about your mom. I, <laughs> that actually, wasn't bad. <laughs> oh, God. I have no idea. Where this podcast has gone. No. Yeah, we got to find the rails and get on yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> we're very off. Damn it. I thought that was, I thought this was all really good. I think we're starting to reach state of delusion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Give us some good questions. You got to yeah. have. I've been asking you questions all fucking <laughs> that don't, night. That don't involve our. Our moms. <laughs> <laughs> Literally anything no. else other than our moms. It's funny. It seems like every time Ryan is going, that's where it ends. I mean, I get it. I love the moms, too. <laughs> so I can't blame you guys, but fuck. <laughs> Dude, okay, so, Dave, I need I need your expertise okay. on this because I watched this and was so confused. Okay, Dave, you love punk rock. Mm -hmm. Love it. Mm-hmm. If you show him a picture of MGK right now, I'm going to roll out of my chair. Okay, Evan also loves punk rock. He loves MGK. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. MGK is his So I know when you rock. go to a punk rock concert, mm -hmm. mosh pits, mm -hmm. that's like why everyone goes. Like to a punk Cultural rock. experience. Exactly, yeah. okay? So what is this? Is this what happens? Oh my, not just a fight. Is this what happens? No. But just watch it. This is punk rock, right? This is like hardcore. What am I witnessing? It's like a sub-genre of punk rock. It's like hardcore, which... That one's definitely a little on the violent side. There's a man on stage just kicking people. Yeah, that's not very punk rock. <laughs> So to me, that's very punk rock. You guys need is to go this, to a show sometime. Culture? No, we need to go to a show sometime. So the actual, like the rules of the mosh pit is everybody's extremely friendly in the most violent way, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So it's like you're pushing each other pretty hard. Okay, so let me put myself in the setting. Okay. MGK's on stage no. fucking singing his heart out. No. <laughs> If you push anybody to MGK concert, they're crying. Okay. For sure crying. All right. So you're in the pit, okay? You're bumping elbows. You're, you're shoving people that normally you couldn't get away with shoving, like people three times the size of you, and they disappear into the abyss of people. But the second anybody like... David, I'm sorry, but I cannot see you shoving these. Oh, dude. I just went to a, a show like two nights ago in the zone, <laughs> fired up come out like bruised elbows and all this so are you in there wearing hockey pads <laughs> the second somebody falls elbows. this is the cool the second anybody falls like everybody surrounds and helps pick you up it's like nope that was too much Let's pick them back up somebody loses a shoe like instantly somebody's like holding it in the air trying to find whose it is like everybody's very very friendly they're not throwing fists you're just kind of elbows out and pushing from behind and it's a real friendly place. You get to release a lot of good energy and like shove some people around. Evan, have you ever been in a mosh fit? No, absolutely it's a not. Good time, man. You gotta try it. It's funny because besides David, Ryan is the only person to be in a mosh pit. We've been to some EDM concerts where Ryan lets loose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those sad. aren't like mosh pits. Those aren't no. No, those are peace, love, Circle happiness. Pits. That's Circle a bunch pits. of sweaty people on Molly. Yeah, mm -hmm. Circle pits are where it's at. Speaking of sweaty people on Molly, can <laughs> <laughs> how we do it back there? <laughs> He's ready for bad. David, <laughs> most influential soundtrack: Tony Hawk or Dave Mira? Tony Hawk. 
Disagree. Pro Skater 3, probably. No. Nah, Tony Hawk Pro Skater one 2 is four. the best one. One through four. Fair. Did you guys okay. get to experience that part in your life? No, but I it had uh, MXZ versus ago. ATV Unleashed. That game was the shit. Mm. Also a good soundtrack. Yep. I used to uh, like pick out a favorite song in my video games, and then I would turn off all the other songs and just <laughs> listen to the same song on repeat <laughs> as I played the game. So what? Do you remember what song it was? Uh, Life is a highway. Life is a highway. <laughs> I want to We've been. This is the third podcast. That's what. No. That's the song that you were listening to. It's uh, oh, EA Sports nice. is in the game. No, it's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's in the game. No, yeah. You're trying to do the intro right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, no, it's, it's, it's in, in the, the game. game. And then I it starts. Don't. I had to play. Yes. Yes. It's Magic Carpet Ride. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is on the cover. <laughs> <laughs> and that game, it's it's like NASCAR 2003. NASCAR for, Thunder! Yes, I had it for GameCube. <laughs> Dude, and all I had was Magic Carpet Ride by Steppenwolf. That was the only song that played. And I was sick. My dad and I used, we used to do... We used to do like the full 50 person races, and the first thing we'd do is turn, turn around off. Turn around and just yes. carnage. Yep. <laughs> so sick. We all did live the same childhood. Woo! I'm sweaty. <laughs> I don't think anybody ever played the game if you didn't do this, but in MXZ versus ATV on Lazy, you would just drive to the border. And shoot back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was sweet. We all did that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, I had such a good time having you guys here. How long did we do this? I think we're just getting started. Are you wrapping this up? Oh, cripes. I'm just getting warmed you, up. Then. Have you got any questions for me and Ryan? Yeah. What you got? Yeah, what are your moms like? Let's keep Ben's mom's mom out of this. beautiful. She's hey, a chiropractor. Whoa. You say my mom's hot. I said your mom's beautiful, and you're going to be offended with what I said. <laughs> All right, let's stay professional here. Oh, <laughs> can't win with these guys. <laughs> Hypocrites. <laughs> Hypocrites. Yo. David. Yeah. First time you ever pissed yourself from drinking too much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I ever have. Liar. <laughs> Okay, I never pissed myself, but I did piss on my Xbox once. <laughs> oh, I remember that. Wait, what? I just, uh, I woke up in the morning once after a night with Cousin Joe, getting into some, uh, what were they, uh, Natty Light Seltzers. I went to turn my Xbox on, you know, like a normal Saturday, you want to play a little Fortnite, and uh, it, it didn't turn on. So then I picked it up to check if the cords were plugged in and uh, liquid spilled out of it. <laughs> And then I observed the glass TV stand or entertainment, whatever it's called, full of liquid. <laughs> I smelt it. Definitely pee. <laughs> 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 but I did tear the Xbox apart, threw the hairdryer on it for 45 minutes, runs like a champ, still have it till today. No way. You Do you remember the act of peeing on it? Absolutely not. I don't even remember leaving Cousin Joe's house. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Dude, I wish I had something to add to that, Ev, but I just don't, bro. I have nothing to compare that to. I thought you guys would come in with, maybe you peed on something once. Dude, the audience, the audience got, um, they got a new side of Evan that doesn't really come out that often. Talking? Yeah, <laughs> mostly just that. Mostly the vocal side. You got to get me yeah. teed up before I know how to talk. You should know that by now. <laughs> we have been getting you teed up all day. <laughs> I'm talking. <laughs> Mike, you got anything to add? Yes. Mike, back to the mosh pit. You want to tell the story of when you got, like, chloroformed? Oh, I'd love to, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I guess to preface it a little bit, Ryan and I really wanted to go to this EDM festival. We convinced Ryan's parents. I had to do some convincing of my own, but I remember being there in the room when they were like, you're not going. And I'm over there like trying to put my own in like, it's going to be okay. It's chill. Was not chill. Was not chill. But uh, we, we got to go ahead to go. Like Ryan was 18. I was 19. And we went to the festival and had a time. We camped. It was greasy. We camped. It was fun. A <laughs> lot can't. of lot of external activities going on around us, but we weren't involved in that at the time. And we just, yeah, we really did. We just got our case of or beer. Ever. And by the way, yeah, <laughs> 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 yeah, also or ever. Okay, but um, we 
<laughs> jumped in first night. I don't know when it actually happened, but anyway. Just skip to, to, to the part where you get drunk. <laughs> I was oh just, my God, I was like Mike. fucking third night. <laughs> Mike. Third night, I guess. I was just about to ask what night it was, but third night. <laughs> Wait, maybe we should have somebody tell the story that didn't get <laughs> drunk <laughs> and might remember. What happened? Yeah, if you want to... You were not. Hey, first Ken, time. Ken was there the second time I got <laughs> drunk. <laughs> oh, no, the second time. No, uh, anyway, let me actually get to the point then. Ken I'll, I will. Is, Ken is watching so anyway, an absolute dumpster fire from back there. Third night. Um, it's basic. A guy in front of you is like done smoking a joint. He goes, you guys want this? He seems chill. <laughs> Definitely not chill. I, I need to preface this before we get into it. Definitely not chill. <laughs> seem chill. He seemed chill. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Common mistake. No. Common mistake. I make that all the time. But like, and, and so this would be where Ben is like, no, I bet the dude had a full painted face and was like a devilish looking. No, he wasn't. Mm. He was chill. But, uh, I mean, anyway, passes it to me. I'm like, cool. He goes, you want to finish this? After he just got done smoking it. And I go, sure. And smoke it, and that was it. I was, like, lost control of all my body, lost control of standing, my arms, basically vision. Like, I didn't know what was going on. I'm, I'm like, I, don't, I didn't know what was going on. And I basically oh dipped formaldehyde. Yeah, Yeah, and so that's what I wondered too. Like something weird was was happening because right before that, also like open this story up however you want. But like right before that, some dude was walking around being like he had Vicks. Oh yeah, Vicks, and he was like, "Smell this, smell this," which seemed weird too. And it's not like I went like, "Oh, let me get." It was just like he walked around. It was that was weird. And so then right after that, right, right after that. I mean, a little. (laughs) A little. Not enough to make me die. And then the dude passed this, like, joint back. And then I, like, basically, like, fell. And Ryan caught me. So guardian angel. Now I'll take over because we're Michael Black's out. So we are, like, eighth row. There's, like, 50,000 people behind us. It, it It was intense. Headliner show of the night. Micah just completely loses motor function. And I'm, like pretty young at this point kind of dipping my ankles into drinking i was you know i've done it a bit but I'm just uh, dipping my ankles into formaldehyde but i didn't quite understand the whole like not being able to control yourself under uh or whatever really any yeah anything. i just didn't get it so mike just starts going he's falling all over everybody everybody's like dude get off me i'm like what the fuck is micah doing and i'm like okay and basically, Micah just starts to drop to the floor. So I grab him, and I'm like, oh, fuck. And there's this blah, blah, blah going on. It was the most intense thing. And so I grab Micah and start trying to, like, drag him out. And nobody wants to give up their spot as you're trying to move through the crowd. And then I kind of, like, shifted Micah to where I was, like, kind of, like, <clears throat> grabbing him under. And he's just, like, limp yeah. in my arms. And I'm basically dragging a dead body out of the <laughs> concert bowl to what people had seen and then people started moving the seas parted i drag mike up on the hill and i'm like are you okay and he's kind of coming back too and then uh yeah, it was short-lived maybe 10 minutes but that's what got me was when you no one dmt trip the worst part is uh, this this sounds bad and it is bad the worst part is is I don't know. We still don't know. What mm-hmm. we I don't really know. By the time I got us out of the like the the mass of people, you kind of start coming back, you're like, what the fuck just happened? And I was and like, I, I don't know, dude. Yeah. So you blacked out. You don't I remember mean, it at all? No. I, I do remember it. Um as far I remember like faint scenes of getting guided out of the crowd. And when Ryan explained that, he said, No one wants to get out of the way. Even when you want to get out. Hey, I'm go- I'm going to piss. I'm going to get water. No one cares. They don't even want to move out of the way for you. If they know you're beelining it out, they might get out of the way. But when Ryan explained that, that I was like ghost white and he was guiding me out of the crowd, people were like dragging. And I remember that vividly. People were like, Oh fuck. This guy. Yeah. Like they got start out of the way. yelling back, like move. Yeah, yeah. Move, and they move. got out of the it way. So that was kind of weird. And then like we got out and you were like 
what's going on, dude? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? You I don't, don't know. know, dude. And then you so were you like, you didn't see him do this. Uh, no, I did, yeah, like, you did, but, right but, but here's the thing. See him do this, do what? Like, obviously, again, it was probably from homie passing the joint back. But, like, what was it from? Because just before that, this guy was passing around Vicks, like I said. There was a lot going on. Maybe, but there was a lot going on. Like, Mike what? was putting that sniffer <laughs> in places he no. shouldn't have been. I'm sure of a little bit of, like, <laughs> Googling with the time frame that it lasted – you can maybe figure out, like, narrow it down to a few Well, things. we tried, and then... Yo, then, dude, yes. that, that's so criminal and so disgusting of a human to do. As far as that yeah. goes. You don't yeah. know somebody's medical condition, whatever. It could no, kill that, somebody. I know. I think that's the worst part, was, like, looking back on it, is, like, if it was predatorial, predatorial at all, so uh, such a disgusting thing. Like, I mean, and I was in good health. I was fine. Um, it actually happened the next year, too. <laughs> <laughs> so that's okay. kind of made same guy. No. Saw the same no. guy there. <laughs> so this is now what we're maybe... starting to have a reoccurring problem, Mike. This is... I hate to say it, bro, but it might be you. <laughs> this is what led me to believe that Micah doesn't burn. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine it's just regular weed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, dude. Boy. So the next year, to make the next year briefer, the story briefer, um, we were there doing the same thing, and I remember being like, "Obviously, don't do that again." I mean, there's some people, other people are saying that too. Don't take anything from anyone else. Just don't, especially at a festival. Micah didn't learn. <laughs> so, like, we're there this year with Ryan, myself, which we've been veterans at this point. Mm -hmm. That's probably where I got my false confidence with Justin and Ken. And we're there, and not the same dude, but dude does the same thing. You guys want this? I'm done with it. Sure. I take it. Take a hit. Oh, I'll do it. Hand it to Ken. <laughs> <laughs> no. Whoa, whoa, what? What? Yeah, Ken, Ken takes a puff, too. And then this time was different. But Ken burns. Lighter. Yeah, Ken <laughs> burns, so he, he handled it. And then I remember this was on the lull of the show, so it wasn't a show going on. <laughs> and I was I like, I was like, uh, dude, I, I don't want to explain it. I, I don't want to glorify any of it all. So I don't want to explain the experience. But then after Ken saw what happened to me, he was like white faced. Ken just started freaking just out. knowing what, what he was watching. He's like, is this going to happen to me? Seriously. Is this going to happen to me? And then he realizes it's like, happening. I'm like kind of holding Mike up. I believe at the time yeah. Ken's freaking right, out. I'm like, you had oh, to wait, wait, I wait, need wait. one of you to free wait, your calm Because on. I said this. This is the weirdest, like, kind of grossest part. I was like, Ryan, because I knew he was my, like, safe, safe person. Ryan, it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> I said that. Yeah, I said I remember it multiple that. times. You're like, it's happening it again. It's like, happening yeah. again. Like, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> fuck. So I started taking care of Mike. I'm um, getting him water. All this, and then Ken goes, "Is it gonna happen to me? Is it gonna happen to me?" I'm like, "You need to calm down. I need to deal with the one that's dying." Yeah, and it, it never great. did happen to Ken, but yeah, no, he did great. Yeah, he burns. He built Clinton. And honestly, like ever <laughs> since then, like we haven't been he doing. What? He built he Clinton. Built Clinton. 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 Didn't you hear that thing smoking weed? He's like, he didn't inhale it. He just. Oh, uh, he Bill Clinton did. Bill Clinton. Elon Musk did. Yeah, he Elon did. It's a right, 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 right. He, 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 he puffed it, but he didn't inhale. It's a '90s kids thing. I get you. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. So old. Yeah. yeah. So like, ever since then, we have not been to a fen uh, <sighs> festival. But that's not the reason that we haven't been to a festival. Mike, there's a reason you shouldn't go to festivals. Maybe I had a great time. <sighs> I bet. <laughs> I had a great time. You stressed me out, Mike. Yeah. Well, you t you too. Honestly. Well, uh, we've been uh, yeah, yeah, wrap this. We've been podcasting for about four hours tonight. I need to go look up where hamsters are from. <laughs> People checking the time of this podcast. It's only been going for. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Hey, you got to go check out David's yeah, podcast. Yes, sir. What's, what's the it's name of the podcast? A lot better right now. I feel. <laughs> what? The podcast we recorded earlier today is a lot better than the one that we just yeah. did. No, yeah. it's just a lot different. That's all. As far as our flow, Sorry, Dave, maybe. you sat us down and you said, you can't say fuck. No, sir, you can cut <laughs> the fuck this, as much this, as this we want on this a, podcast. This is more of a statement. Our flow was a little better. We're definitely you a bit delirious. You just wait. You just wait. <laughs> okay. All right. We actually got to wrap this podcast up. Thank you if you made it to this point. 
<laughs> a lot of um, laughs. A lot, lot of laughs, a lot of random stories, and uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Bye. <laughs> what the? Evan, the table. The table. <laughs> No, the, the, the put the table where no, you're almost the, touching. No, the front, right there. Oh, fuck, I put it on Mike. He gave me the thump. Wait, the <laughs> I ran by Ken first. Oh, man, face. Oh, my God. Remember about Evan breaking things? God and how, damn it. Did I break the table? And how I never trusted Aww. it? I'll fix it. I'll get some putty in there. God damn it. I'm sorry, guys. I told Ken, I was like, break the chair at the close of the podcast. No, I was vouching for it, too. No, that does suck. That's worse than Kevin breaking the whiteboard. Uh, new merch drop this Thursday, <laughs> seven o'clock. SteveBoysTV.com. <laughs> We're an absolute mess. We make these videos to entertain you guys, and uh, <clears throat> Evan, entertain Mike, you shall be. You two need some serious help. <laughs>